Hi, I'm Nam Kiwanuka, and this is Dan Rubenstein, the author of Born to Walk. Dan, I thought it would be nice for us to come outside and talk about your book because it's about walking. You ready? I'm ready. I like talking about walking, but I like walking too. So. Now, when you're outside, what effect does nature have on you? So, in addition to uh, the fact that as a species we were mobile and, and walking for so long, then got sedentary in cities, we also throughout the bulk of our time on the planet, lived in a natural environment. And in the blink of an eye, we got out of nature. And we've lost a lot of the, the benefits and positive properties that nature provides. Um, so it, it can be relaxing and restorative, um, but there's some research underway in Japan into what they call forest bathing. And it looks at um, these essential oil-like compounds that trees emit. And these, these, um, these um, chemicals that come out of trees are meant to protect against, against rotting and against insects. But they also have these beneficial therapeutic properties for people. They, the, some studies show that they can have impact on, on things like blood pressure, even the incidence of certain types of cancer. So we evolved symbiotically with trees, with nature, and then, boom, we're not in nature and we're getting sick. So being in nature has physical and mental properties that we're not even aware of, that we don't even understand. And walking in these environments helps us sort of get back there. And as a writer, an author, do you think being outside sparks your creativity? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's partially being in the natural environment, um, but it's also the movement in the natural environment. Um, it's the combination of all these stimuli. So it's, it's, it's the birds, it's the creek, it's the leaves, it's the people we run into, and all these new things we're seeing mm -hmm. kind of jumping and juxtaposing with all the thoughts in our heads, these cyclists coming past. Mm -hmm. That gives us new ideas, new perspectives, and that's what sparks creativity. There's been some really cool research in the States mm -hmm. that sends people on these long distance hikes in the desert and has, has them do all these creative reasoning tests before, during, and after, and the numbers show that people are more creative after they go for a walk. So it's not just something in our heads, it's actually a, a scientific phenomenon. And one thing I found out reading your book that I didn't even know about, um, some CEOs, some pretty famous CEOs, do meetings in nature? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Steve Jobs walked around a lot. Um, Zuckerberg apparently walks around the Facebook uh, campus a lot. Um, but that, that practice is becoming more normal, I think. And this, this sort of a phenomenon of walking meetings is starting emerge, to emerge. So, you know, you, 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 you're working on a project with a bunch of colleagues. Instead of sitting around the table checking your BlackBerry every three minutes, you put the device down, you go outside, you walk, and you talk. And you, you, you benefit from the activity, from the nature, from the creativity. And you might have some incredible ideas for whatever project it is you're working on. Um, it, it, you know, it, 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 it takes a kind of a shifting corporate mindset to be more open to those types of things, but we're starting to see it. Now, you mentioned the BlackBerry. Um, do you think technology is affecting, uh, is coming into play when, it, you know, we can't really walk anymore, but if we have a BlackBerry, we have a cell phone, we can really do a lot of stuff outside. Yeah, yeah, you can. Although, I mean, one of the, the, the beautiful things about walking and walking in a natural place is that you can be really present and really focused on your surroundings and slow down. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking and, and clicking and staring, you lose some of those positive properties. At the same time, yeah, you can get things done. You can stay connected. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the mobile office in your hands, so you're not really cut off from the boardroom or, or, being, or being reached. But, um, you know, I, I think in addition to losing our touch with nature and becoming sedentary, technology is at the root of a lot of um, individual and social health problems as well. So walking is really uh, at its core, it's a way to, to get in touch with the human ecosystem in which we live as well as a natural ecosystem. And part of that is uh, entails a disconnect from that type of digital te tether. One of the best stories in the book, you have lots of great stories in this book, but one of the ones that spoke to me, uh, being a refugee, I walked when we left our country, we actually walked from one country to another country. But you have this great story about your grandmother. Can you share that with us? Yeah, so my, my grandparents, my mom's parents, um, were in Poland um, when, uh, when the Nazis invaded. And they literally had to get up and, and, and walk east. And they walked east into Russia. And uh, I think, you know, that, that movement kind of stayed with them. And I know that um, when they did come to, come to uh, North America, they settled in New York City, and my grandfather just kept on walking. And for him, it was a way to get to know the city where he lived, to get exercise, um, to, you know, to feel connection to nature. He loved walking in ravines, and he took me on a lot of walks when I was a kid in ravines in northeastern Toronto. And uh, I think it, it, it always was part of who he was, but it, it became a really essential part of, of his whole personality.
Thank you, Dan. It's been a pleasure meeting you and reading your book. Congratulations on everything. Thanks. It's been a lot of fun. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.